Objection! Hello, and welcome to the first part of making a custom Ace Attorney case. If you haven't seen the introduction episode yet, you can check the card or the link in the description if you want to see what we can learn in this series. It's only two minutes long. In this episode, we will learn the basics of Objection.lol and how to make investigations with locations and characters. As a note, Objection.lol will work in both mobile and computer, but works best on PC. Open your browser and enter Objection.lol. There are three programs on Objection.lol. The simple objection, which is for a very simple frame, the objection maker, which is what we'll use, and the courtroom, which is for live multiplayer, however you cannot create cases with it. Select the objection maker. I would recommend creating an account, as this will allow you to save, backup, and share your cases. Without an account, you have to download your case every time before you leave the website. To create a new case, select project, new. We want to create a case. Scenes are not interactive and don't have investigations, but we may look at them later. They are similar but have less features. Let's take a look at the interface. We have the main project drop down for managing our project up here. You can save and load your project here, and we will go over the rest of the options later. Over here we have the groups and court record. Groups can categorize frames. Frames make up everything in this program. Every piece of text or effect is contained in one. The court record is where evidence is stored, but we'll come back to that. Up here, we can store custom assets, preview the case so far, or publish it. Here we have our first frame, but we can add more using the add frame button. Every frame has a unique ID. For instance, adding a frame above 1 will add a frame called 2. However, the first frame, which is frame 2 here, will actually run first, then this one. The ID is not what order they will run in, at all. Currently, we're in a normal group, not an investigation group. Head to the Groups tab. This is our current group, called Main. We're going to add a new group, name it Day 1 Investigation, and we're going to set it to Type of Investigation. Now we can delete this main group because we don't need it. So we have our investigation group now. We cannot add, we cannot add any frames yet as we first need a location. Click Locations up here and add location. Now we can choose any background you want in the game. Anyone from here, you can choose. I'm just going to choose the basement and now give it a name. You can give it whatever name you want. If you're moving between locations, this is the name that will show when coming to this location. And we have either hidden or revealed. If you choose hidden, this means by default you can't move to this location, but you can choose to show it later in the game. Reeled means it will be reeled by default, but this is a starting location, we don't need to take either of them though. Here is our location now. Let's add some text. Now either click preview at the top, which will preview the whole thing, or this eye icon here, which will preview from this frame. We have a few problems now. None of these buttons down here are clickable, and we want them to be clickable. So we can examine, move, talk and present. We, there's no character, so we don't need to talk and present, but we at least want to examine the room. We have nothing to examine, nowhere to move, and no one to talk to. Yay! Also, the text box is in the classic style, which is this. Let's change it. Uh, head to Projects, Options, and under Dialog Style, you can change it to one of these. You can always change it back later if you don't like it. And now our text box is in a new style! Unless you didn't change it. However, our character's name doesn't appear above the text box where it should. To fix this, you can tap on this frame sorry, thumbnail. 
and we have a bunch of settings. We can change the background. I don't know why you would because this is the location, but you can. And we have a bunch of stuff down here. What we want is custom name, and this is what will appear above the text box. So I can write in Phoenix here as is a character. If I preview it, we can see Phoenix says hi, I'm Phoenix, right? Great, that all works. Now we have our character, and we can start by adding the basics, which is items to examine. Click examine over here, and add examine. Now we can grab this red box and put it wherever we want. For instance, I'll put it over the door. This means when the character is examining, and they put their cursor over this, it will turn yellow. When you click examine when the cursor is anywhere in this area, it will examine this item. So like I can add one for the door, and I can add another for the stairs, maybe for over there, maybe for somewhere else. I'll just add one for the door, I'll give it a name of door. Hidden, if will mean that when you put the cursor over it, it won't turn yellow until you decide to hide, you know, show it again. But we don't need to do that. So now we have the door. I'll add a frame, and our character can say it's a door. There we go, yay! We'll give, we'll, and to give the character their name back. There we go, look, it's a door. Except for the fact that the character, when the when it thinks something, it's in brackets, but also in blue text. Luckily, we can colour our text. But highlight the text that you want to colour, and select this paint icon. We have a bunch of settings, so we can click blue to set it to blue, or you could choose your own blue and click apply down here. I'm just going to use this blue, because it's the default. And now it puts it between these two tags, which will make the text be blue. Just like that pretty simple. If we now preview it from the start, I am Phoenix right? we now have an examine button. So the cursor is blue out here, if we examine, nothing happens. If we put it anywhere where the door is, it will turn yellow, we can examine, it's a door. And this also has a tick now. Because we have XSX, because we have successfully examined it. And, but, our problem we have is this blue is not saying anything. Normally they would say something like, no clues here, or nothing here. So, what we can do is go back to here, and go examine anything else, and make them say something like, nothing here, or no clues here. Highlight it again, make it blue. It's really easy, we can test if it worked. Door door works, anywhere else, nothing here. We don't have our character's name though, but that's simple enough to add, custom name, Phoenix. Brilliant, okay. Before we add a character that we can talk to, we need to remember what happens in a new location in the games. <laughs> there is always centered green text telling you the date and location. So we'll add a frame above and add something similar to this text. November 10, or you can change the date, 9.02 a.m., uh, whatever you want your location to be, and then generally it's like what part of the location. I just finished it, okay. Don't worry about that. If we run it, it's centered green text. That's the most important part. Luckily, we know how to color the text. We can color it green like that. And look, green text. To center it, you can add something called a frame action. To add a frame action, either click the cog, the cog and go to actions, or just click actions straight up here. And we can add a frame action. You can, we'll see multiple options here. Yeah. You can sign characters to the gallery, display a pop-up, like one of these, or center the text for the frame, which is the one we want. So it's now centered like this. However, normally we get a typewriter sound, 
which we can which we can change in speech blip over here. Typewriter. It it works, but it's a little bit too fast. We can change the text speed though. So we want to go here and click here, and now we can add text speed. The default is 28, but I'll set it to a higher value. I'm gonna go 60. And of course, when this frame is over, it won't keep the text speed to go back to normal. So if we run it, we get our text speed. But it sounds like someone is literally spamming that typewriter a lot, like 50,000 times further. It's not good. Uh, but first, I will also show you a shortcut. If you write ts.60, you can click tab, and it'll do that. So you don't need to click the text speed again. And another thing, if yours isn't working, if you put your text speed inside of the green tag, it will look like this. You can't put any tags inside of the color tags, so just put it outside of it, like this. That's going to be the best way to deal with it. However, we still need to fix our blip, which is our blip frequency. That's what it's called. Project options, you can see the default value. We don't want to change that because it's fine for now. Just know that the default is 56. If we change it, they'll change it for the whole game. So we can actually add another frame action and change the blip frequency value. I found 95 works well, but you can try another value if you want. And that actually works quite well. Another thing you might want to think about is normally when you click this button, at least in the trilogy there is a sound effect. So you can head back into options and just go into continue sound, you can click select trilogy, and that will give it that sound. Just a little bit. This works good, however, after we play this, Phoenix says his line a bit too slowly than normal. We can fix this though, because remember this rule, frame actions run before the frame. Using this logic, we can set a frame action on this frame to change it back to the default blip frequency when Phoenix says his line. The default's 56. You can test this now. We got the slow text. It might even be a little bit too slow. You can speed it up, but Phoenix says it at a better speed. So it's great, we have all this. As we have our introduction, we can add in a character. So I'm gonna tap, actually I'm gonna make a new frame, tap on the thumbnail. We can add our character right here. This is where you have all of your characters, and there are a lot of them. For this, I'm going to add Gumshoe. It looks pretty good. And we also want to remove the custom name Phoenix. It will automatically put Gumshoe's name in, so we don't have to put a name here unless we want it to be custom name. That's why it's custom name. Here we can select any pose we want. Pumped. He'll do this. He'll play this animation. If you don't want the animation to play and you just want it to be a solid frame, you can actually deselect pose animation. But we'll look at that more later. I'll just set it to confident for now. And we'll run it from this frame. I'm Phoenix, right? And then Gumshoe just appears out of nowhere. Like, I know Gumshoe is pretty impressive, but like, you can't really just appear from nowhere. So we'll click on the cog here on this frame and click effects. We can add a fade or a filter. We want to add a fade and we want to fade in our character. 1000 milliseconds is one second, but I think 500 milliseconds works better, which is half a second. This is Gumshoe, you might want to even do it quicker, but I think that's kind of how that works. As you see, our character fades in. But let's say I give him some dialogue. He just, he says it before he's even fully faded it. And that does not look good. So what we can actually do is add a pause. If I 
put my cursor right at the very start of the frame. I can click the stopwatch icon and just select how many milliseconds you use. Again, there is actually a shortcut for this, P.500 and click tab. So now that we have that, if we run this, it works, but there's another problem. It still says Phoenix here. It's better when the character's fading in, we just hide the dialogue, the dialogue box entirely. To do this, remember what frame actions do? They run before the frame. So if we had one to hide the dialogue box before Gumshoe speaks, it'd be perfect, right? Luckily, we can with the toggle visibility. It will hide it until a character speaks. Meaning, we'll hide it there, and then Gumshoe can say is, hey pal. That's pretty good. Before we add some conversations, we're gonna add Gumshoe's music. Click right here before the pause, after the pause. Select music, and you can choose whatever music you want. You can click preview if you want. Stop the preview, and just insert a tag. And now our music's here. And we got some gumtree going. That's always nice. Now let's add some conversations to talk to. Click conversations up here. We have two options, completion conversation and present anything else. Present anything else will be the default when we present something. And completion conversation is when certain conditions are met, which we can customize later on. We won't look at that right now. Let's just add a conversation. We can either add it from when we talk, so add one called the case. Don't make it be hidden, because we want the option to appear when we talk to him. But you can also add a present, like if you present a certain piece of evidence, then he'll say something particular. If you select hidden when presenting evidence, that when he presents this evidence, he'll just do the default, unless you unhide this at some point. But we will look at that ever later when we do evidence probably in the next episode so we have the case right here and I'm gonna add a conversation something to note is that just make sure you add Phoenix here and the most important part is like if Phoenix is going to be talking Gumshoe speaks it. You don't want that to happen. So use no talking animation and Gumshoe won't speak it. And you notice how Gumshoe did his head scratch like this? He's like, head scratch. If you just want to have this pose, turn off pose animation and you won't do the head scratch. But I want Gumshoe to do the head scratch because he's Gumshoe. Alright. We are now going to add a case action. Is this is the completion conversation. So frame four, actions. You can add one case action up here. This is an important rule. Case actions run at the end of the frame. That's really important to know. We're gonna just go through all four of these in the investigations. We'll look at the other ones later. Toggle the visibility of investigation items. So if we have a location here, Remember we had the hidden checks box. Yeah, we can make ones appear or hide again. We can do the same for conversations, hide or show conversations, and for examine, hide or show examines. The next one is mark investigation elements as unvisited. Yeah, we can do that, location. If you see introduction frames, all these three introduction frames, this means they'll play the first time we're here, but if we leave and come back, they will not play again, unless we mark it as unvisited. And we can do the same for conversations. Instead, normally when you do a conversation, it has a tick next to it, that will remove it. Same for examine, remember we had that red tick? Yeah, it will remove that. Swap talk conversation. If you have a conversation of a character, you can make it swap with another one in the exact same place. There are a few useful scenarios for that. But configure completion com conditions for location. This is the important one we want. So we can select our location here and add as many as we want, or three. 
conversation, examine, and expression. Expression is something a little bit more advanced. It's like variables, like five equals two. That's never gonna be true. You have to write it like mathematically. Like if you do that, it won't work. I believe you need two equals if you're doing like a variable. Something, but conversation examine. It's like once we've done the case and examine the door, it will run a certain amount of frames that we choose. And let's say we make Gumshoe leave there, then we want to hide his conversations, but keep the examined. I'll perform fade, I'll show you what that does. So now that we have that set up, conversation completion, Gumshoe will just say bye. And we'll fade out the character. Gumshoe, confident. Boom. I'll show you what that does if we preview it. I'll preview it from here. You can examine the door and then talk to him about the case. And then and then if it will work. Let's check our case action. Conversation required, examine required. Okay, actually, I think it might be presented with you from the start. I might have to do that. Maybe I also have to do that. Oh, I don't know. What is the case? Uh, there we go, it faded. Faded into it, but Gumshoe also faded out during that fade, because that's what we had, we didn't have a pause. But it does fade, and then we'll play those fade, and it'll play, play those frames. And just you can no longer talk to him. His music is still there. If you want to stop that, there is a music tag here, you can fade in, fade out, or stop music. Add in that thing. So, unfortunately, this is where we need to win. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed and learned something, then please subscribe and like the video so you don't miss any more parts of this series. Uh, I will actually release this project and leave it in the link in the description. I'll add a few more frames for some example conversations so you can check this if you want. And part two may already be out, otherwise it will come out very soon. And in part two, we focus on finishing investigations and learning the rest of the basics. We'll also look at the court record and adding evidence and profiles. Thank you very much again and goodbye.